Yeah, this is uh, capital planning. Um, and open session public meetings are subject to being recorded. Your image and voice will be recorded. Uh, or maybe. <laughs> um, so the first thing on our, our agenda is just to talk about all the requests that we've had. Um, and I think hear from the lovely people who have uh, decided to attend, um, describe their requests. Anybody have anything else before I start? Um, just, just on there, we've mm. received two requests, one from the Agricultural Commission for garden mm -hmm. fencing for 45000 and then there was one from Community um, Preservation for the fencing for 45000 Oh, okay. So I ignored that and just, I, but I have them, it in there. That sounds wonderful. Um, yeah, that's part of my questions for Kristen. Um, okay, who wants to go first? I'll let Freddie go. First. I get quite a few. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of them that we're going to withdraw is actually the uh, the, loop, the RT replacement one. Um, I was actually looking for twenty seven thousand dollars for the extra because of cost increase, um, but Kristen was able to secure ARPA funding for it. Yeah, they, the select one voted that. Yeah, so we're going to withdraw that one on November 14th. So I have a question though. I thought we were supposed to, I don't know if review is the right word, but I thought we were supposed to review ARPA funding. Not approve, disapprove, just be like, yep, okay. I don't know. Okay. I can speak to that if you'd like. Okay. So yes. the air handler was already approved for right. purchase. It came in $23,000 over budget, unfortunately. Um, nothing has been entered into. A contract would have to be signed by the select board. So I'd be, you know, more than happy to have capital weigh in on it. Um, you know, they were willing to honor their price for March, which I was really excited about because ARPA funds. I I asked for thirty thousand, even though it was twenty three thousand over, because I assumed there would be some type of inflation. Um, and I think it makes sense to move forward, especially since they're willing to honor it. So the total price of the air handler would be one hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars. Okay, but I can answer any questions that anyone may have about that. No. Oftentimes, other things come up. You know, something goes rotted that somebody didn't see. So just leave it in until it's all done. Absolutely. Okay. And if you'd like, I could speak. There were a couple other ARPA items that the board did discuss. Okay. Um, and I'll, I think I agree with you that you should look at them or discuss them as well. Um, I presented my own ARPA list to the board, which sounds a little silly, but um, I have had probably over 40 meetings in the last, this is week 11. <laughs> um, I've had over probably 40 meetings, and I've gotten a really good sense from department heads, boards and committees, um, and commissions as to what the needs are out there, what the projects are, kind of timelines for things. And I can say a lot of folks, uh, there's a backlog, so there's going to be some catch up that has to be played. Um, but so I put together a list and the first couple of items on there were things that have already been approved, but came in over budget. Mm -hmm. um, the air handler was the first one. Um, I did put in the ambulance, just so you're aware, the approved ambulance has come in $119,000 over budget. Um, I have the chief researching this and he's gonna present more information to the select board on the 28th. That has not been approved. Obviously they want more information. Um, I anticipated we would need additional funding for the roof projects, both the town offices as well as the old fire station. So I did ask for um, an additional about $190,000 for the roof projects. They want us to get updated quotes for those and have a further discussion, which mm -hmm. we will do. And Fred is in the process. I think you already got one was 200 for the town office's roof. Uh, well, that was back in 2019. Oh, that was That's when one. the first 200 was approved uh, for the, the roof here. Um, and that came from North Star. Um, so that was, I don't even think it was a quote because in the email it said um, David just requested 
um, like a ballpark estimate uh, on the loop itself. Okay. Um, and that's that's where the guy came up with that two hundred thousand. Is that even on here? I don't no. think that's on here. So the funding had already, the 200000 has been allocated. My concern is with um, escalation of, you know, prices. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be one hundred ninety. I didn't actually realize we had that much already previously allocated since I'm still trying to wrap my hands around everything. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get quotes and um, we'll have a further discussion about that because I can't make an estimate to even put on, put on any kind of list without that, so. Okay. Um, and then the other items were some engineering work that um, Fred needed to do for road work, um, basically in order to move us forward so we could apply for some grants for uh, future projects for roads, bridges, culverts, different things. This is um, a request that Fred had submitted, I believe, was it last summer? Yes. Um, and so the board approved putting $150,000 towards that work which I think will pay itself back, um, you know, multifold. If we can apply for grants, there are state culvert grants, there's the small bridge program. Um, I'm familiar with writing those different kinds of grants, so that's something we can work on. Um, and then also the weatherization at the highway barn. Um, it's, did we say 25? That one's escaping me, I think it was 25. Yeah, and I think that was actually high. Mike. I think our coal came in on like 14, okay. which still is outrageous. What that's about is uh, when the building was built, um, we have roll up overhead doors and they never put the brush seal kit on any of the tops. Um, it was brought up to Keith, it was brought up to Dave, no one did anything about it, so I started pursuing it. And where it stands now, like last winter, we got snow blowing in through the top of the doors. Uh, and for a net zero building, it's we got more heat and air conditioning pumps. Um, so I first reached out to uh, Mike Biana, who was the architect who designed the building. He researched it because in our closeout binder, all we had was basically the owner's manual. We didn't have what was part of the installation. And in that book was the seal kit. So he researched his end of the thing and found out it was supposed to be put in. And so we've been going back and forth with an architect that actually did uh, the contract work. And he's saying, well, you know, the doors are over five years old, they're out of warranty. Well, how do you warranty a part that was never installed? Um, so it, it's been going back and forth, back and forth for almost a month now. Um, and now that we're coming into the cold months, you know, we started this back in spring, you know, the drive to get them done. And it's just been going back and forth. Um, so we had a company come out. It was actually the company that installed it uh, wants to give us a quote for like $14,000 put a part in they should have put in hmm. originally. Um, so that's what we're trying to get done now. Can you put that on your list? Do we get that quote already or we're yes. waiting on it? Nope, I should have it. Actually, we got that uh, a while ago. Okay, can you send that my way? Yep. Okay, perfect. So what happened, and just to backtrack a little, like I was starting to say, I made my own ARPA list. Um, I didn't actually expect anything to get approved. Um, I was pleasantly surprised, but um, you know, I kind of just put some ideas together because the board, I think, was at a little bit of a standstill with regard to ARPA. They had so many ideas and so many projects that had come in. And um, you know, my experience using ARPA funds in a previous community is you, you really want to do it for filling in a gap in an existing project or a larger project. Because the problem is if you do 25 small projects, then you're having to do procurement and project management on all of those small pieces and it becomes a, a really burdensome, time-consuming thing where you probably have to get into a situation of having an ARPA project manager, which you really don't want to have to spend money on in order to manage a huge amount of projects. So putting a larger amount of funding towards some of the bigger items kind of made more sense and um, I was pleasantly surprised that the board did agree. So I recognize the process kind of got a little inverted. Um, what I will do is I will get that list out to you folks. Great. And um, it is just ideas. I did list what had been spent so far and just some ideas of what could be spent, what the money that was left could be used for. So, but those are the four things that um, they agreed to allocate funding toward. So I didn't know if anyone had any questions on those. Do you know how much money is left? 
So they allocated 200, that, that totals 280,000, but there is probably a little bit of padding in there because of inflation, and as you mentioned, the weatherization was lower, the air handler came in $7,000 lower, um, but there was 800 and, off the top of my head, I believe it was $841,000 that remained. Wow. So 841 minus 280 will give you your total. Okay. So Thank there's you. still a significant amount of funding available. Okay. Okay. Back to Hyatt. All right. Um, so one of the ones I'm going for is uh, the, res the facade repair and painting here at the uh, Public Safety Building. Um, well, that is all original. It's actually starting to weather. Um, I don't know if you've, you've seen it. Um, yeah, wow. The paint is flaking off the front over by the, uh, the Berlin sign. And basically, it's, uh, it was a material that was put over to cover any of the existing intrusion um, when it was made over in the school. Um, so it was, it's a material, it's almost like styrofoam, but it's capped with like a stucco. Um, it's actually down below here and right out front. Well, the top of it is all starting to eat away. Um, so we're looking to have that repaired and then everything repainted uh, going around the building. That was a quoted price um, of $15,873. Um, we only had one company do it because uh, it's the only company in the area um, that would give us a quote because uh, they're the only ones that were doing it. Uh, I did reach out to uh, the company that originally did it, uh, but they were down in Connecticut and they weren't coming up. So I'm like, okay, fine. Um, but if it comes time, uh, then we can try to find another company in the area that's willing to come up and see if they can perform that type of material. Um, I didn't I didn't include pictures myself uh, because the company that came out actually took a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. I think I sent them with my request. Um, so you can see the areas that we're talking about. Um, so that is that one. If I may, just one thing to keep in mind on that, we'll have to reach out if it's approved, just at least reach out for the third quote. Um, since it's over 10,000, we have to at least attempt to get the three quotes for procurement. Do you have any idea if removing the stuff that's there 100% and replacing it with something different would be better? Uh, I honestly know nothing about that stuff. Um, it's called refab. As it was, they had to reach out to the company to get whatever tooling they used for the, the shape of it. Um, so I don't know if that's what increased their cost. Um, but I can reach out to them again and see if there's some other alternative that they can do um, for that. That might be a little more nice maintenance. Yeah, I, I'm just, just curious. Yeah, no, I can definitely. Um, uh, another one was for so this one we're looking to replace the John Deere mower. Um, the mower we have now um, on the picture, it's a sit down unit. Um, so this one here, actually early springtime, uh, the mower blew in. Um, so we've been actually using the cemetery mower um, to do all the cut in. And by cut in, it's basically we use the small mowers to go around the edges of everything. And then we have a drag behind game mower um, that comes around and does the bulk of the mowing. Um, so this little mower actually gets trailered to all the different areas in town because it's the smallest one we have that we can put on the trailers that we have. Um, nothing else uh, fits on the trailers. Um, so I'm actually looking to replace this one with a stand-up unit. Uh, I've talked with a lot of the landscape companies in the area uh, to get their view on you know what's a good brand for them. Um, and then I checked with uh, Boston Lawnmower and also uh, Padula Brothers uh, for two different costs. Uh, this one comes in um, Seven thousand dollars cheaper than what a sit-down unit would be, um, and the way the guys were having a tough time mowing this year, they want to get as close as they can to things without having to get off. Um, so we've had to fix two or three soccer nets because they just don't want to get off and move them. So I figured by going with a standard unit, they're already standing. All they got to do is step off, move what they got to move, climb back on, continue moving. Um, so that's that's one of the things. I did get pushed back from them because they don't want to stand. Sorry, um, but at least with the standard, um, and, and the thing with the motor on this, um, at the time, there were no motors anywhere in, in the US, uh, and that was even going through John Deere, because um, this was on through Padula Brothers, and they couldn't find a motor anywhere. Um, 
is so it's been sitting in the shop. So we've been using the walker blowers uh, to do this work. And I don't think the walkers are really cut for it, but that's what we had. Um, so that's that's what we're trying to do with that. We did get a quote, it's just over four thousand dollars to get the mower replaced when they do become available. Um, I'd like to keep the mower. Um, and then if there's funding left over at the end of the fiscal year that I can put in order for a mower. Um, we can still use this one as well. Um, they do, like in my write-up, um, they said that they usually go 10 or 12 years, uh, up to 2,000 hours. Uh, we're only at nine years with just over 2,200 hours, so we're over the hour limit, but under year-wise. Um, so it's kind of at that point where something was gonna start happening, it was gonna happen. Um, so we got the life out of the mower. But it's, it's still in too good a shape to actually get rid of them. Um, you just put them over in it, um, and we'll have that for another nine years. We don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's, that's one of the requests we're going for. Um, and the last one is for uh, replacing carpet in some of the vinyl floor coverings here in the building. Um, we're actually starting, this will be a, a, an ongoing thing, so next year I'll put another request in. Um, we're starting at the PD and fire end and working our way down this way. Um, so it's going to basically take uh, the long hallway coming in from the police department, going in towards uh, the booking area, the kitchen, uh, for tile, and then the carpet in, what do you call it, the gathering room? Or the the office room? Yeah, um, into the office room. And I believe the sergeant's room. The one that's at the very end. Detectives. Detectives room. Um, so that's where we'll be starting on the police end. The fire department end is going to come in off the apparatus bay um, and do their hallways going in, including the bathroom, uh, the locker room area, the kitchen area, and then one office that I think is a conference room um, for carpet. Uh, and we're not going with the one piece carpet, we're actually going. With the, I thought we were gonna do, you know, the two foot, two foot tile with squares, uh, but they're gonna go. It's more like a, a three foot by eighteen inch. Um, so, in, in the heavy traffic areas, we can just take it off and put new, new stuff down. Um, so we don't have to replace carpet that doesn't need to be replaced in the area. Um, so that's what we're gonna start changing over to. Um, so we have colors picked out. There's blue, there's red. Um, so that's where that's at. And then. Um, a lot of it, I don't know what Keith had changed over the years, um, so I don't know if some of this is actually original. I'm not sure. And uh, I wish I'd known earlier, but the assessor's office actually has the same problem. Their carpet's delaminated and starting to look like a wave. So they put down a uh, one of those chair mats that you roll around on, so they put that over for now so no one trips over it. Uh, I have that in my office too. If you can get a chair mat, between both um, desks, that, that would be fine for my office. I didn't know where to look for them. I can get one. We, we might actually have one. Well, I, I found available. one. Um, <laughs> and I already scavenged that. Right. <laughs> um, so you need a second one? I need it from the town computer over to the state computer. Okay. We can get you one. All right. <laughs> So that request was for 28,000. I think it came in less, um, but like the, yeah, so it came in at 27,896. Uh, I was gonna go a little bit more because where the funding usually isn't available till after July, um, I figured prices were gonna go up. Um, but I figured if we started with this, we could always take off sections of tile. We can shorten it up um, if, if needed. That one, I took pictures, but I thought I printed them and attached them, but apparently I didn't. So I have pictures of, at the highway garage that I can send over. Great. I feel like I heard a rumor that there's some sort of water problem at the end of the hallway and that carpet gets soaked all the time. Yeah, we uh, last year started. We had unknown water. Hallway gets wet, slippery. Then I brought Freddie in the officer's room. The carpet was just soaked, but the tile wasn't wet. The carpet was soaked. But we think it's more the HVAC system not performing. It's just humidity coming up from the floor. 
middle is that much? Well, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. And also, um, I think well, I think once we get our air handling issue, I mean, remember we've had HVAC problems since day one here. This is nothing new. You know, it's it's been an issue since day one. I, mean, mm -hmm. I remember the heat going out after the first week of uh, winter being here because we went through 900 gallons in a week. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a little snafu with the heating system. <laughs> Went through 900 gallons. It's a lake. little snafu. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I just, you know, I don't think we'll ever, it's been, what, 22 years? We still haven't got a handle on our air conditioning and heating in the building, so um, we keep on throwing Band-Aids at it. We have a lot of big Band-Aids, but, yeah, we're not sure. I mean, I think it's 100% to do with the handler, and it's just not pushing air. I mean, my office was out of air for... How many months before that piece came in? Yeah. yeah. Even the, uh, the so. detective's room, um, it's the hardest room to get heat down to. Yeah. Um, I literally turn that up to like 74 degrees and it doesn't even break 68. Yeah. Um, down that far. We should talk at some point, depending on what we have in the budget, because I know a guy who's kind of like a miracle worker for these old buildings. Yeah. He did work in my old community on the same problem. like hot in some rooms, cold in other rooms, leaking in places, couldn't figure out what was going on. And he knows all like the old school systems and was able to make some really big differences there. So just something to keep in mind. He was kind of literally like a, like a miracle worker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had days where my office is like an ice box. I have to wear a jacket yeah. and it's 100 degrees outside. In the dispatch or the admin's office, we go to print something. The humidity is so high that it jams up the print. Yeah. I have so. a space heater I got for my office. It's freezing all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah SageFact isn't new. <laughs> the thing I don't agree with is I, they call it a common plenum. So everything above here, so these are a portion, and the ones that look like grates on the return, um, nothing is individual. You know, like in your house, your return basically comes from that room back to your unit. This, it's wide open throughout the whole second floor. So you're taking everything above the drop ceilings and trying to pull that back through the machine. Um, I asked about it, and I was told, well, that's how they do it in commercial space. Well, it seems like a lot of waste to me. Right. Um, you're pulling whatever dust is up there um, and everything, instead yeah. of just pulling the room air, pushing it back through the machine and putting it back in the room. Yeah. I think these ducts have only been cleaned once in 22 years, too. Yes. Um, that was probably like 10, 12 years ago. No, it hasn't been that long. Was it? No, because uh, Dave did it. When did he? Was it Dave? Yeah, because uh, yeah, the machine was out front with all the tubes. Yeah, it was like forever ago. Yeah. So I'm apprehensive about replacing carpet that's getting soaked. I'm not saying it doesn't need to be replaced, but I'd love to figure out what the problem is yeah. before we put yeah. new stuff yeah, down. So solve that problem first. Yeah. yeah. If solvable. Right. Yeah, because like I said, it just started not this past summer, summer 20. When did we lose that second air handler? Was it 19? It's 19 been about two to three years. Yeah. 19, yeah. I think, That's, is when they yeah. started appropriating for it. Yeah. Because one year was 40 or 60, and then the following year was just the opposite. Yeah. So that might tie in yeah. with that wet floor. So we start someplace else and then, oh yeah, you know. Well, we can still come in that hallway. Um, we'll just leave that room for now. Uh, at some point, we'll have to rip the, the carpet up to find out are there any cracks on the floor? Is it, yeah. is it surface water coming up through the floor? Um, and see if there's anything underneath. You know who knows that system inside and out is Greg Tremelli. Yes, I remember. You, I think you told me that. He was all on the committee. He's an electrical engineer, mm -hmm. and he dealt with that as part of the. That was his baby on the energy committee. Oh. I was just the clerk. I just took minutes. Uh, yeah, we put mini splits in every office. Uh, it, it, Tim Wysocki was the uh, street light person. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jibo was for the uh, contracts. And Judy Bowman was, she was pretty good on the contracts too. Yeah, we used to use the company called ATC. They run in Connecticut. Um, 
that's when ABUs keep used. And uh, we had an incident in the summer where um, one of the dampers up in the unit stayed open. Mm. Uh, it was right. open 100%. The computer was reading 10%. And it was just pulling all 90 degree humid air into the building. And, and the unit couldn't keep up with it. Um, so once we figured that out, we shut it. And, uh, and then the AC started keeping up. But that was Viking Mechanical, because I reached out to ATC, and uh, they wouldn't call me back. And then when they called me back, they said, don't tell them they never came. Uh, so it was an ongoing thing. And uh, I met Lars, uh, the Viking Mechanical owner, just one day on the street. And I called him, and I said, you know, is this something you'd be interested in taking a look at? Uh, he was on vacation, but he called his guys that day. And they came down, and they troubleshot it and figured it out. And I was like, oh my god, like, you guys are our new guys. Mm. Is it one zone or there are two zones or every room has its own zone? Uh, it's actually several. Um, so one zone will actually do, well, one damper will do two or three offices. Right. Um, which makes it hard because like June likes it cool, uh, but the assessors <laughs> like it warm. So they share that one damper. So all you can do is close the damper down a little bit, which is going to affect the next people on the thing. I'll right. switch offices with June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how they're done. On this half anyway, the police department and fire department, they have it, almost every room has their own zone. Um, hmm. Just it's different over here. So you shouldn't have that heat problem unless the damper doesn't work or controller doesn't work. So, right, yeah. exactly. Um, we did finally find a plan that shows where the zones, where the okay. dampers are. Um, the main one that always seems to be the trouble is just inside Dennis's office. That's the one that sticks <coughs> doesn't work and that's been replaced twice that I know of because they leave the parts downstairs on janitor work. Um, as soon as I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so that's an ongoing thing. Like so far this winter it's been working for the most part. Um, and uh, the only other issue we had was downstairs in the vault um, air handling. That spilled water all over the place on one of the human days um, because a bell came off and no one knew it. Lars came in, we took a look at it. We thought the condensate pump was gone, which it was, um, but it wasn't the problem. It was just being overheated. It wasn't working. Um, so we had to rip the carpet out of Victoria's office and that air handler office. Um, so Victoria's back in hers uh, and the air handler's up and running. But it's the first time we've ever had a problem with that one. He was good to learn about that. He'd never seen one before, but he, he did the job on it. So I was very glad. Thank you. Cool. cool. Anybody have any other questions? By the way? Nope. OK. OK. Sounds good. Chief Shartner. All right. So the first one I have is the mobile radios. Um, so we elected to go under Chief Galvin with um, Kenwood radios, which are about the third of the cost of Motorola. Um, we started replacing the cruisers with uh, what we call tri-band radios, where we can talk to every community, uh, whether it's Marlboro on 800, North Broad 100s, or Broad and Hudson on 400s. Mm -hmm. um, we have two more cars to go, so rather than keep on waiting, we obviously we have the uh, new antennas coming. We need to make sure it's not our mobiles that are deficient, and we're running mobiles. I said said here, 15 plus years old. Um, these are the same mobiles we're putting in our cruisers back in 1995. So um, I know the one in my particular cruiser that I drive uh, was bought refurbished in 2016. Um, but it's a 1990s vintage radio. Um, so um, just looking for two more tri-band radios. Uh, like I said, we're going with Kenwood, almost a third of the cost of Motorola. Um, if this was a Motorola quota, it'd be looking at 18,000 for two radios. Um, so um, trying to be financially responsible, and we have them already in three of the four cars. Uh, actually, the next car coming is gonna get one, um, and the officers love them, you know. I mean, of course, there's always their, the downsides to them, but uh, for the most part, they love them. They 
love being able to talk to everybody and be able to hear what's going on all around us. Mm -hmm. So that's our first one. Uh, the second one, so uh, my car is due to be replaced, the one that I drive, and I got two quotes for you. Ford has uh, canceled over 20,000 orders this year, so we lost our cruiser that did we, we were, we were um, um, ordered back in May. Fortunately, I did find one with another dealer. We had to pay an extra thousand dollars for a convenience fee because uh, we did not order the car through them. Um, Ford went up a minimum of $4,100 to start with the hybrids. So now they're starting over 41, most bids around 45,000. Uh, Colonial is doing 41, I think. Uh, that, that's what I, I put it, the quotes in the air. Um, you know, I know we're a green community and you know we want to try to buy green, uh, but this is a replacement for me. Um, I'm not idling. I'm not sitting on the side of the roads idling, doing radar. Um, you know, I have put 4,000 miles on my cruiser since May. So I'm not, I'm going to be under 10,000 miles a year. So I think my carbon footprint is low enough. And when you see that a Tahoe is over $4,000 cheaper than a hybrid cruiser, um, Ford Explorer, and it's not apples to apples. This hybrid Explorer is like rubber floors, basic tin can cruiser package where the Tahoe is an LS package. The residual value right now, they're paying around 25,000 for trade-ins on five-year-old Tahoes with 100,000 miles. In five years, I may have 45,000 miles on it. Um, so I think the residual value is gonna be much higher and it's a much lower cost vehicle. Um, so I was gonna leave it up to capital planning to tell me which car to go forward with for, uh, for town meeting. And with the Tahoe, I can, I can transfer over lights from the pickup truck over to the Tahoe because um, it's a large platform. The lights that are on the pickup truck will not fit the Ford Explorer. That, that's the $4,000 difference. What are you going to do with a pickup truck? Uh, well, uh, they offered me 13000 on a trade. Oh, okay. Um, um, you know, projected to have around 86,000 miles on it. They're, they're projecting a $13,000 trade. Uh, I think we'll have much better luck on the SUV. So, um, if I if it wasn't if it wasn't a cruiser for the first five and a half years of its life, I could say I could easily get three more years out of it. But it definitely has the hours on it, so I think it's time for it to go. Seeing it's been in service for over six years, and I think that capital planning was supposed to have our cars for four. So, um, but actually, I can get rid of two cars. Um, we saved the car because we had two people in the academy this year, plus the bridge academy. So we, we saved the car, and it's been a saving grace because we've actually been down cars. Like we had one picked up on a tow truck today and taken to Webster for a water pump, uh, fortunately under warranty. Um, but that car is like 61,000, or, or yeah, I think it's around 60, no, maybe 70,000. So fortunately with that car, we had extended warranty. So. Um, so now we're down a car, plus we have uh, actually two people in the full-time academy right now and one in the bridge academy. So um, our cars have been everywhere over the Commonwealth over the last several months. So, um, so I think by next, next year we'll be at the point where everybody's out, full staff, and I can uh, get rid of the 2018 Volt and the 2016 pickup. And I think the Volt will probably run around 10 pickup truck municipally around 15 so I think we'll get 25 in return is there any place that we have a Google Drive that has all our vehicles listed by year and mileage and I, I think our equipment's all listed but not our mileage you know like for us it's tough because our 20 was it our 19 and our 20 or we have two 20s because of the whole debacle right and we ended up getting the cars like four months apart, even though there were two separate years that we right. bought them. Uh, we had two cars that were worth replacing probably not this fiscal year, F-125, two hybrids, all three of planes. But, because you know, they're running. We average like, when I was doing fleet maintenance, we, I figured out we're having 25,000 miles per car per year. Per year, yeah. I just thought it'd be easier to be able to like, see it all on one spreadsheet mm -hmm. yeah. if we had the availability, and not just your vehicles, but I mean there's yeah. 
highway and there's yeah I, I know everything was listed I, I remember getting a whole yeah we, we do have do we have yeah we do have they, in our Google Drive I couldn't yeah. find it um, I yeah I don't I don't know what's going on with our Google Drive. I, I, I couldn't find anything in the Google Drive I couldn't Drive. find anything in the Google Drive okay so I it's just not found just fire me. all right no. okay no all but right. we did have and somewhere I probably have a printed copy um, of an equipment list. Um, provided to us by June and by uh, the I, I thought there was one, and, but I couldn't find it. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe it has mileage on it. But it no, it does not have mileage. Yeah, yeah, mileage yeah. changes so much. And well, it's also, we well, that's true, it's also year. hours. Yeah. It's not just miles, it's actually yeah. hours for us as well. Yeah. We can get you. I think I got an updated list recently, so oh, good. we can get that up to you. All right. I, I couldn't find it. I thought I had one, but I just... We definitely did have one. Okay, I wasn't With dreaming. Like town property. Okay, and okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Uh, yeah. Where do we stand on the Stevens Foundation in a vehicle? Uh, so that vehicle should be in in mid December. Um, by the time I get training and all the licensing done for everybody, we'll probably look at April 1st. Okay. Um, but that, that cruiser will go into service um, as a duty car. So that, that's because we're actually due this year to buy two cars. Well, I with our fleet. I put right. down two. Yeah, yeah. So we're due this year for two, but with the Stevens Family Foundation buying us a car, we're only down to one. So you know, say so actually the car that they're buying is sixty-five thousand. So it's yeah, that's, that's with all the equipment. That's with the eight thousand dollar cabin and power inverter, and whatnot. So um, you know. If, if this was a cruiser, this is like I says, this is uh, an admin car slash cruiser. You know, this doesn't have a cage in it. Um, it has half the lights. Um, so next year, I'm probably looking at closer to 60 for an Explorer. Um, you know, I always joke the first cruiser I ever went to pick up was on a bolt, and I went with a $9,000 check to uh, Commonwealth Chevrolet down in Boston. You know, mm. and it was a leftover 92, I think. <laughs> 93, left over 93, it was 1994, left over 93, the 9,000 Noah check, and I feel like I'm like beside myself when I look at these cars, you know. But, yeah, you know, like I said, I put them both down just to show you the prices. Ford has gone up a lot. Mm -hmm. The pickup truck went up $7,500 from last year, the Ford Lightning, because Colonial said, hey, you're a green community, we can get you a Lightning. And I said, really? Yeah, we ordered 100. Got four. Mm -hmm. Ford canceled the other 96. And of course, our cruiser is one of those got canceled. They canceled mostly all hybrids. And uh, usually, they do price match from year to year. If they cancel your car, they say, We order 23, and they price match between that year. So we got in a little bit of a pickle. So, as much as you want to be green, can we afford it? Can we afford to be green? It's challenging, I would say, too, because you've got. All the vehicle shortage in general. Then you got the fact that Ford discontinued the Crown Vic, so everybody went to the Explorer, and they can, you know, increase the price for that. And I can tell you, you know, in my previous community, they started going to Tahoe's too because they had an issue with a pickup truck that had a plow on it that was way too big that highway needed. So they did this kind of switcheroo thing because they could throw like a plow, which I didn't know um, on the vehicle and they ended up getting three more Tahoes after that because they found that they worked so well. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, they were cheaper. They worked better. They seemed more durable. Um, as you said, more residual value. Um, and that was something new to me. So. Yeah, the officers love the hybrids. They love them. But I know communities around us are actually starting to hear more concern and profit. But our officers are very happy with it's, it's a great cruiser, um, but like I said, I'm not idling. My carbon footprint is so small, um, you know, to put, you know, 4,000 miles on a cruiser in six months, seven months, seven months maybe, you know. Um, you know, like I said, I go from point A to point B and go to meetings, and I do go on calls. There's no doubt about that, but um, it's just not, like I said, I can't it's justify not spending. comparable. Yeah, yeah, I just can't justify spending money. I, I am a very frugal person. That's why I got thirty-six hundred dollar radios instead of nine thousand dollar radios. Um, so, I'll, like I said, I'll let that up to capital planning. Let me know which one to go forward with, and 
we'll go from there. And even if we do go with the Tahoe, we'll still four out of the six cars will be hybrid. Um, so we're still well over 50% um, of our fleet. Well, we need that for our annual energy report to the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ready for the next one? Yep. All right, so our security camera system in the building um, was installed in 2017, covers the town hall, fire station, and police station. Um, this past summer, uh, we had some issues with it. After a thunderstorm, we lost uh, one of our, it's basically like a little computer up on the wall. Um, when Galaxy came in, came in to charge us $600 to come in and look at it and, and reroute us, uh, we had had no maintenance agreement with them. 2017 we used funding and just installed it we never had a contract with them upgrades all of our software is unsupported um, so if the system goes down it's done um, so uh, this uh, what was it four thousand four thousand basically forty seven hundred dollars uh, will get us up to par and covers us through December 23 um, I will get a price from them to continue maintenance every year and make it part of my line item budget um, once once we get up to get up to 2023 um, you know figure out what it is it sounds like it's gonna be around 800 dollars a year to have support but we have no support on our camera system yet how many, how many cameras do we have total uh, that's a lot um, two, it's got to be over I mean, it's a cell block, Sally Port, outdoors, fire station, town hall, lobby, out back. Um, there, there's a lot of cameras. There's a lot of cameras to go with it. So, like I said, our biggest thing is that we haven't paid for any software since 2017, and it's unsupported. So we're actually on a Band-Aid right now on a used 10-year-old laptop with the system on it. So this 4700 would cover all the updates? It will bring us back our software back up. It still doesn't cover the blocks on the wall, which they still haven't been able to get any price because they're not available. Um, <laughs> so I can't, I can't uh, tell you. It could be, it could be 1200, it could be, you know, 6000, I don't know. But the laptop's working right now. It's just we need to get the software up to date. Uh, and the show book cannot open up our doors anymore because the software is not supported, so it put a security lock. So we can't communicate with uh, with regional dispatch anymore. So if you came in today, can you buzz me in? They can't buzz me in. We did something for like twenty or twenty five thousand with security cameras three years ago, two you years added, ago. Yeah, you added cameras. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we added cameras and uh, but didn't add software. So that they, was. They just put it on the existing system. Well, the system was working. Right, right. Yeah, that was so allowed. The system was working. We let it be. You know, um, but like I said, it was after, I'm not sure if it was a lightning strike. Uh, we're notorious um, for getting hit by lightning. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, it's a known fact when there's a lightning storm like you had been, like we've already warned her. If it's thunder and lightning outside, don't touch your computer. Just move your chair back. We've been hit several times uh, because of the tender in the back. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can't we can't show that it was it just happened to have gone down afterwards but the age of the piece of equipment and it runs 24 7 it's like if you left your computer on running 24 7 constantly going for five years you know you could really you would die out on you so and I think our deductible I think it's probably beyond our deductible as well it might be I yeah. think property But you know, the major issue we found is that our software, we're not supported, which is obviously we need to be supported if we have an issue. Perhaps that would be a good use of Aquaphone. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good possibility. Um, like I said, it came in well after they asked. No, uh, it's just that it can be done yeah. sooner yeah. rather than waiting half a year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> she has a good batting average. <laughs> <laughs> We did try to apply for a grant. Um, 
our insurance company was offering a risk management grant, but unfortunately they're very specific as to what they fund for cameras. They did give Fred $3,100, but Ooh. unfortunately did not fund the cameras for the chief. So that they're gonna have to duke it out, I guess, and figure out. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. I know. <laughs> I also hate to say that it's um, $4,600 is what you're asking for. J just a guess today. Right, right, but that's below our ten thousand dollar threshold. Mm, yeah. So you can do whatever you want. We don't have anything. To say yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I like community input. I yeah. Mean, I do. yeah, yeah, just makes everybody well aware. You know, yeah. that's forty seven hundred forty seven hundred dollars may lead to fifteen thousand dollars. Do you family. know what it will be? So that brings us to twelve twenty three, right? Is that what you said? What's that? Twelve. Yeah, yeah, December, December twenty three. 23. Yeah. Which what will it be six after months? 12 a well, year? Well, I mean, I figure if it's forty forty seven hundred dollars to move us up five years, um, you know, so 47 divided by five, so it's $850 a year probably, you know. So that's that's something I'm going to have to have to work with them and yeah, put it in the annual budget and, you know, it's like an insurance policy on it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. Can we come in uh, next Monday night to the select board meeting? Mm -hmm. We can ask them if they would be willing to put like our that. money said, for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, how's that we, sound? I like that, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> let's let's make a plan. All right. All right, and the very last thing I have, which does break your threshold, um, mobile data terminals. So I, I know I did a quasi presentation a few months back on this. Um, so we have two of our patrol cars, mobile data terminals that are 2013, 14, 15 era, and um, you know, definitely time for I think you know, state keeps on upgrading, and you know, our, our in-house software keeps on upgrading. And uh, one of these upgrades, the computers are not going to keep up. Is so that the MDT? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mobile data terminals. Okay. You know, so I figured if I can get two to get us back all up onto the Panasonics, the new Panasonics, um, then that is going to leave me a segue. I can take a year off and then start replacing one a year after that and get the fleet. We actually did just have to send one, one of the Panasonics back. Um, the uh, screen was was uh, broken, and uh, I think it was eleven hundred and twenty dollar repair that we left budgeted for. So, but um, you know that was even one of one of the new ones. So, you know, they're not they're not cheap. They're not cheap. Now, does that come with a new vehicle, or is that an add-on? Uh, no, add we would probably would probably if. If there's a new vehicle that needs one that has the old computer in it, we'll upgrade it. If not, then we'll uh, we'll just we'll just have them replaced with the inside of the cars. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, fortunately everything's there. Like the mounts are there, and like everything we can use is pretty much right there. But I mean, as you see, this the the tough part is is like the the mounting and installation is just as much as the computer. Mm -hmm. That's all liability. That's what I have for 2024. Any questions? I've asked questions all along. I know, right? But I'm not allowed to say thank you until I make sure <laughs> that everybody is good. Okay, thank you. Right, right. Oh, definitely. Thanks to you both for coming and going over these and. Yeah, like I said, just mull it over. Let me know what you want me to go forward with. And, uh, you know, I uh, do whatever you guys say. Whatever, you, whatever your best friend is. You know? Okay. I think it definitely depends on, I don't know, where we're at, what our number is, and then yeah. what everybody else is doing as well. Well, yeah. I think it would yeah. come out of the um, high and commons mitigation. Yeah. And it doesn't seem exorbitant. Yeah. No, I would agree. No, no, just trying to trying to stay status quo with the with the good equipment. You know. Do we have a number on Highland Commons mitigation? On what there? Because it varies every year, right? I can find out. Okay. You're talking about for twenty four. Sure. Whatever money we're talking about spending now, I get confused. Yep. When we're in 22 and you're asking me, what, I know. fiscal year? It's 24. 
Do you have any questions of us? Mm. No, like I said, just look over the vehicle quotes and let me know what you want me to go forward with. Well, I added both of them into the calculation. <laughs> well, <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's cool. I, I'd say yes if we needed them, but, you know, you know like, we, we'll get them as we need them. You know, and this year it's, it's going to be one, especially with the Seamus Family Foundation donation. You know. So how many cars does that put us at? Uh, well, we have seven right now. Uh, we usually have six, but like I said, I kept one um, as a spare. The vault. We, yeah. Um, and uh, so we'll actually, the car coming in is going to replace one of the, the 2016 that's six and a half years old um, with a hybrid. Mm -hmm. And then the drone vehicle will potentially replace car two that's got, it's actually out for a water pump right now. Um, but depending on when it comes in and when we actually put the Tahoe in service, um, I'm not sure when we're going to actually get rid of that car. So then, but the truck and the, and the Volt, you know, I'd feel comfortable in May or March putting the Volt on Munici bid once the last officer's out of the full-time academy. Because, like, right now the car is going to a lot to Medfield. Um, that's where they have the firearms range for the academy. So the vehicle's getting a lot of use. So we're at seven, and you anticipate by, say, town meeting, we'd be at five? Six. Six. six yeah, yeah, yeah so six of the five patrol cars and, and uh, administrative car. So that, that's, that's where we've been at for years. Yeah. So. That's where that Google Drive is going to come in handy. Right. So we know which one is vehicle one, two, three, yeah. because... You're talking numbers like 2016. Well, which one? Oh, that's vehicle yeah. one. Okay, so that one's going to be replaced. So vehicle yeah. one's not going to become vehicle eight because you yeah. keep no, 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 no. We replace the numbers. Yeah, that's the one thing. We replace the numbers with the car. We're replacing. We hope. You know, one don't, is always one. We, we don't have car 24. You do? <laughs> oh, no. oh well, that's how we do it in our industry. Yeah, I know. I know, and it gets confusing. So that's why we. So one will always be one? one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's how we do it on the highway, too. We just keep going. You just keep going, right? Yeah, so we're at like 32 now. Yeah. Even 32. though you only have maybe 10 vehicles. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. No, no, I'd be out of my mind trying to keep track of that. <laughs> Sometimes I just change it to the yellow truck, because then I know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Never mind the number. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask one question? Where do we stand on the antennas? Uh, antennas have been ordered. Okay. Your guess is as good as mine on delivery and what the weather's going to be when they do come in. And mm. the cable comes in and, yeah, there's a... Coordinate everything. Yep. Yeah, and they won't go up there if it's minus 10 and 30 mile an hour winds. And, <laughs> yeah, Sounds fair. I mean. so, so we may, you know, we may be... We'll have an we, indoor antenna. Yeah, yeah, we've been waiting until March, but yeah, we've come a long way. We've definitely come a long way, and like we have a, a target now. And we've come up with, you know, instead of running fiber optic to every antenna, um, they believe that we can run microwave from Taylor Road to Coburn Road, and we only have to do a three mile uh, fiber optic run, basically, or less than three mile. Um, it's a lot less than that from here to, here to Berlin Auto Parts, but crossing the roads and whatnot, or what, you know, and then get into the building. So say, we, you know, we may be down a three mile run instead of a 19 mile run of cable. So, and I've also talked to the Stevens Family Foundation. They're willing to design their new museum with a couple pieces of conduit for a third site on the South Berlin side. So that's all long after we replace the antennas and see how those work. After, yeah, yeah, after we place everything, um, but that will save us $120,000 of building a monopole. Mm -hmm. uh, on the south side of town and put up an ugly stick in the middle of a field somewhere on the south side of town. Oh, don't we have that little piece of property down there that they keep wanting to buy for a dollar? Can we put it on that? I'm just uh, asking. Y you know, I mean, I think we could. Um, <laughs> but, but I think uh, they wanted to use that for family housing or workforce yeah. housing. Yeah, I re you know, obviously our biggest thing is like, we remember we're saving not only building a monopole, but also housing, heating, and air conditioning. So, you know, it, it's uh, quite a bit of money if we can work out uh, when they when they design the building to have it uh, ready to go if we need it. So, 
they were just basically just plug and play. Mm -hmm. Good job. <laughs> Here's hoping the antennas fix all the problems. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you know that whole presentation. I think we're going to be around what eighty three percent just with the antennas. We'll yeah. Get to eighty three percent. So that's a mm. huge. Effect. And it only took you from like eighty three to eighty seven, for ninety to. You have to put, put it put another site in. Yeah. At two hundred and fifty grand. Or yeah. More. Yeah. Right. And would yeah. they all be on a loop? So if one it, is pulled out for any reason. So yeah, yeah, the they would uh, would microwave from south. To Taylor, I mean south to uh, Coburn. Coburn Road would be like our main, the hub, the main hub, and then and then uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to work. We're trying to work. I've actually worked out deals with Harvard and Lancaster to join frequencies and put all three towns on the same frequency. So we'll have like duplicitous backups. You know, like you know, hopefully we'll be able to hit their towers and still be able to use our radios. So, but uh, that's our main goal. Is to try to get you know all the communities down basically one one frequency for dispatch all calls and have like two or three motor vehicle channels. You know, if you're up and doing motor vehicle stuff, you go to channel two. You know, or if you're working details, you go to channel three. You know, so we're we're trying we're trying to get that regional approach in, and and what we build, we want to make sure that it can smoothly transition into industrial equipment instead of having to pony up more money to say. Oh, by the way, you guys put up that, but now you need this. Right. <coughs> <coughs> okay, thank you. Anything else, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you guys both so much for coming and going over that. I just figured yeah. it'd be easier than trying to. Oh, it's so much easier. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides that, now it's done and over with, and. I get to email you later if we have more questions. Yeah, yeah. At least there was more people this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Kristen, I just have questions about, um, I'm going to say everything else. <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, the community preservation. Yeah. I see two items for them, the Bullard House and the um, garden fencing. No, the Bullet House did not come in identifying that, so I sent an email to Tim oh. Taylor saying. Is this that? Okay. Yeah. So maybe but Kristen. The financing, the yeah. um, community preservation has authorized that. Okay. So those two things, and there's no conservation? <coughs> no. Submission? Submission? No. Okay. Hey. Community preservation should be getting money back, right? Yes, because they, they don't are. know when. Once they get their, they've the submitted grant the money. grant. Yeah. yeah, they've got their grant. I don't know if you knew that. Go, oh, um, uh, conservation yeah. did nice. So that all that money that was for community preservation <coughs> is going to go back to community preservation. So that was nice. That's great. But the question is, they weren't sure <coughs> when we would get it. And then when would it be available? I think it has to go through another financial cycle. Yeah. It has to yeah. go through like a certification. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like free cash does and then okay. be appropriated. Yeah. Um, but we do actually, the town has taken ownership of Horseshoe Pond from Sun Valley. It, sorry. Uh, Sudbury. 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 Sun Valley. Sudbury Trust. Um, that closing went through, uh, it was either the beginning of <coughs> last week or yeah, I the think week so. before. Yep. So is that the same property or shoe pond? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So the, the funding is there. <coughs> the town has gone through closing, and now we're waiting for the reimbursement to come through from the grant. <coughs> Great. So it's moving. Yeah. Oh, I had one question. For Fred, and that's on uh, the South Street. Oh yeah, thank Bridge. you for bringing oh, yeah. that. Yeah, um, I mean I'm a big lady. I don't <coughs> want to drive over and go boop, oh, no, and no. then find myself <laughs> on a viral. Uh... No, so the bridge isn't to that point yet. Um, so the state they come out every three months <coughs> uh, to do uh, their inspection on it. It's supposed to be every two years, but it's got to the point. Um, so every time they've come out. Um, they haven't changed the rating of the bridge. Um, they haven't even discussed whether or not they're going to close it down. Um, when I met there with the project manager for the small bridge grant and also our uh, engineer, Olivia, 
um, we did a site visit and we took pictures and we sent them to Mickey Swain, uh, the senior bridge engineer. And uh, even though it looked horrendous, um, he wasn't concerned with um, closing it down, even though we do have a through pothole at times. Um, since then, we have put a steel plate underneath it uh, on top of the girders. Uh, Eric Baum is actually going to be coming in. It was supposed to be this week um, to put more plating underneath it um, to make sure the bridge deck doesn't move around. Um, but if, if the pothole opens up and you drive over it, you're not going to go anywhere uh, because it lands right on a girder. Um, it's just separating and going around the girder. Um, so if it opens up and you drive over it, um, there isn't a chance you're going to fall down. Unless you're walking and you step in a hole. Um, <laughs> Note but, to self, avoid yeah. South Street. <laughs> yeah. um, but the bridge is still structurally sound. Uh, okay. traffic going over. Well, is it true that, um, do I understand it correctly, that you, that you get money for engineering one year and then you can apply for a grant to implement the engineering? Yes. Um, so we did get awarded the phase one small bridge grant. Uh, that was up to $100,000. Uh, but speaking with the engine, the uh, project manager, um, she said that was more or less like a placeholder because our engineering costs came to 114 and change. And she says that the state could pick up the whole bill uh, for that. They just earmarked it to start with 100. Um, it's basically just specific from case to case. Um, she's hopeful that they'll cover it all. Um, and then once that's done, they're still in the, the design phase now. Um, then we'll submit for phase two, which is construction, and that goes up to 500. Um, so if they if they do cover the 114, um, there is a possibility that we wouldn't have to pay anything anyway. It's hmm. um, a great program. It is. Um, I wish. I hope they offer it again because if not, I should have submitted for the one right next to it. Um, that was just a half shell, and uh, and that's aged. That that's getting deficiencies. Um, so. I'm, I'm assuming they will open it again because <coughs> this is the second time they've done it. Uh, last time we missed it because we didn't know enough about it. Um, yeah, it got re up for several more years, I believe, so yeah. it should be, should be good on that. So <coughs> as long as there aren't any bridges falling down the state. <laughs> yeah. And they really have looked at smaller communities with it being up to $500,000. They really want to fund an entire project if they can. They've looked at a lot of the smaller towns. Um, <coughs> Lester actually received two um, small grant awards in the time that I was there, and they covered the entire cost of building <coughs> the bridge. One was a full replacement, another was a reconstruction. So it's a great program. Yeah. Um, we did learn, um, after reading through a lot of the reports, the cover sheet that comes with it says right on it, Chapter 90 money can be used for bridge repairs. I don't know why no one else had done it because we do have a lot of bridges in town that do need work um, down to simple, you know, this concrete's falling, there's rebar showing, so it's just a matter of bringing the company in um, to resurface uh, the concrete and bring it back up. Um, some of them just need painting, the girders underneath need painting. Um, so it's just little stuff that's never been done. But if we don't start doing it, we're going to be. Yeah, you're situation. doing. You're talking about doing a bit of preventive maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good thinking. The uh, Jones Road Bridge, it's the same bro. Can we use the same design and put it on South Street and why pay hundred thousand well, dollars? Well, I don't know. Jones Road was closed for a couple of years. You I know it was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so when they do do our project, they were hoping for a fall of 2023 to do it, um, and the close date would be like two months because all they're doing, they're gonna keep the, uh, the dry stack wall. So they're basically just taking the structure off, re-cementing re the cap, and, and putting the, oh, okay. the structure back. <coughs> I did ask about like the Jones Road one, it's a box culvert. Um, I did ask about that because cost effectiveness, so it would have been better, uh, but there's more wetland impact because now there's more digging out, um, which the engineers are gonna try to stay away from. Um, if the walls weren't in the condition they were, then they were looking into that. And it would have been less maintenance. It would have taken a bridge off the, off the board. Um, as yep. it is for the one just up the street that is going to need attention. That too, I'm hoping can be changed. Um, but it all depends on the study from, uh, you know, Lester Ross Dam. You know, the hundred-year flood. Do we really need this thing that big? Um, so. 
but yeah. we take the water for a lot of the communities downstream. Mm. Right, <clears throat> down through there. Um, it would be nice that once they do Wheeler Pond, when they uh, get rid of the dam down there, um, there's a possibility we might be able to get rid of one of the bridges down there, the one closest to Alden Drive, because it's not going to be a spillway anymore. Um, so hopefully that will take one off our registry. That's not a few years. I was going to say, how close will be that? Uh, not, too, <laughs> not too quick. <clears throat> Thank you. But it's still on course. Um, probably in the next week or so, we will close the bridge for a few hours one day um, so we can get on and do the work. And then we're, they're going <coughs> to come in with uh, doing test bores. Uh, so again, we're going to close the bridge for the day so they can set up right in the street and do whatever they need. Well, just make sure you tell the school. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I think I'm done. <laughs> she only thinks she's done. <laughs> um, I can vote now if you want. No, I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> she tried. We don't even know what we're voting on. I do. Um, I mean, you can make a motion for anything you want. No, just keep going then. <laughs> Uh, the transfer station walls, do we know anything about that project? Yeah, well, I can speak oh. a little bit on okay. it. Um, so I put it together for the Board of Health. Um, I kind of was hoping they would have done it last year so we could have addressed it and, and basically had them done by now. Um, so what's happening down there is it's a dry stack wall, and I bet it's been like seven, eight years ago. Keith was, was here. Um, we did a Band-Aid fix where all the, the dirt is washing through it. So there's so much groundwater coming through the, the landfill. Um, it's going down, it's pulling all the dirt down through the wall. Um, at some point, I'm sure some of those rocks have been shifted around because um, it all started when they added that new container down there, the new compactor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they attached it to the wall. So I think every time the guy comes in and he sets the dumpster, there's so much moving around, uh, which isn't helping us. No. Uh, what Dave wanted to do was almost the same thing Keith did, was where we were supposed to dig down the front side of the wall. Uh, we put fabric down it. When Keith was here, we filled it with sand. Um, and all that has been washing through. So then the next plan was do the same thing. Dig it all out, put fabric in, and put stone behind it. It's like, so this, this Band-Aid fix got us five years. This one's going to get us another five years. Um, I, I couldn't confidently say none of the rocks are moving. So at some point, other rocks going to fall out. So I approached Paul and we met with uh, Larry Crosman down there, ran some, you know, just some things. So the idea is we're gonna do the, the precast concrete blocks um, and they step back two inches for each one. Um, so obviously we'll start out a little bit further so they land where they're supposed to at the top um, and they interlock together. So once this is done, we'll do drainage behind it um, so we wouldn't have a hydraulic pressure um, problem. And, with, and then ultimately in the end, It'll be capped with concrete at the top, which that'll bring us up to the road height that's there. Uh, Paul's supposed to reach out to BP and see if they can make their hopper in freestanding so it's not attached to anything. Um, so that's where that's at. Um, I did break it down because he wanted to put it, um, it's expensive to do both sections because they want to do the open top section because that one's coming through now as well too. And it's creating giant sinkholes that we keep constantly filling. Um, so I broke it down as if we're only doing, um, I think 47 feet versus like 50 some odd feet to include the- They uh, did spread it over two years. Yeah, um, so the idea would be to do um, where the new compactor is first because that was worse, and then next year we'll do the other side, which is only like 27 feet, I think, because that one started with a concrete form wall. Um, the idea, uh, like Larry pointed out, if you go with another concrete wall, you have to do a lot more engineering because the wall is nine and a half, ten feet tall. Um, so to save money in the engineering costs, we decided to go with the, uh, the engineer walk. Um, so that's where that's at. Um, I told Paul I could talk if, if he had questions on it. Uh, but we tried to break that down over two, two years. So that yeah, I wondered if it would be just cheaper to, if we had the money to do it in one year, just because 
Right. Well, it, it would be nice because all the equipment would be there. That Well, um, that's, that's it. <laughs> but then I started <coughs> thinking, like, if we're going to end up doing it on the highway. So, you know, it's how much time do we have that we can put in. Um, if we have a company come in to do it, it'll raise the cost, obviously, just quite a bit. Yep. Um, so that was one reason why I, I asked him if we could break it down. Um, if we could do one side one year and then the other one the second year. Um, okay. Mainly for us and our schedule. That was behind that part. Okay. But if, if they're willing to do it all in once, then... Well, I just figure it costs money to bring all the equipment in, and then you bring it out, and then you have to pay to bring all the equipment in again the next year, so... Yeah. Well, and it was only $10,000 difference. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't big money. No. Uh, at the time. Now I'm really through my question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the next? Yes, please. Okay. Anybody know anything about a community center feasibility study? I can speak a little bit to that. Kay. So that was an idea coming from Victoria that we discussed a little bit um, about the town wanting to create, develop a community center for all ages. Um, and you know, looking into potential locations that we could have if we could reuse an existing building. Um, and the first step is to really do a feasibility study. We also are looking at doing a facilities reuse study. So that might dovetail kind of nicely with that to see what the, you know, the study recommends in terms of buildings that could be sold, reused, what have you. Um, so that actually might be able to be tied in um, as part of that, as kind of a standout piece. So, and Victoria, I think, can speak a little bit more to what her ideas would be for that center. Um, but the, the idea was to make it not specifically exclusive to seniors, but actually to be of all ages. Victoria is doing um, part time on the Council on Aging, but she's also our social services director as well. Um, and she's certainly been noticing a lot of need out there, particularly in light of COVID for folks getting out, gathering, doing things. Um, as we've all, I'm sure, read, COVID has taken a significant, um, has had a significant impact, rather, on folks' mental health. Um, and, uh, you know, the town doesn't specifically have a town-run community center. So that was just a kind of facilities request that she had discussed with I think a lot of the towns are seeing this with the social worker addition to their community. I know we're seeing it in Maynard. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we're pretty we're pretty fortunate. Margaret Broad, um, yeah. ahead mm -hmm. of the bell curve. Yeah. Like, right. So, yeah. She she's been yeah, a tremendous a, help for us. We have us, a new amazing one. Amazing help yeah. for us. We have a new one. <coughs> and they're all saying the same thing. What a godsend this has been, oh. especially with with the COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so. she can work on a wide variety of issues yeah. for people of all ages. I mean, right. it's it's really nice. I Very think nice. Helpful on a broad yeah. spectrum. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Has she talked to um, Nineteen Carter? I can't speak to that specifically. That would be a good question for her. I don't know. I, my understanding is Nineteen Carter is a five hundred one c three, um, and they. I believe want to remain as a nonprofit. I don't know if there's a crossover or collaboration on that side, but it's certainly a good question worth asking. I mean, was at the end of the day, we're still a very small community. Sure. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, I'll just die on the side. <laughs> I think it's just dusty in here. Oh, maybe if we had two operational. Needs to be cleaned. What did I say? Needs to be cleaned. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, I do believe, Kristen, that last year we asked for a feasibility study. Yeah, and, I thought so. Um, yeah. And we, um, Victoria, I believe, asked for a community center, um, and we suggested that that all that all go together. Okay. Um, okay. So. Great. It's great that it's people nice are moving forward. To like dovetail and line up together and things I don't know about sometimes align themselves, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we think that feasibility, building feasibility is a very important thing to be investigating. Absolutely. Always. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Cough drop? Yes. <coughs> 
Um, how about general repairs at the library? So um, when I met with Bob, he spoke to me a bit about that. Um, they kind of wanted to set aside a pool of funds for anything that would happen, which it's not specifically capital. Um, and I had talked to him about more than likely he should put in for that as part of his operating budget, but looks like he decided to put in for capital. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did we, be, um, did we receive an official request with lists and estimates? Um, was that not? I don't think so. He just okay. told what he had done in the past, if you look on your sheets. Oh, okay. Mm. Just yeah. off the top I don't have all the sheets. I just have the wonderful thing that Eloise put together. <laughs> um, was there an issue you said with the with the drive? Yes, mm. I think none of us seem to be able, able to, access to it. see into it. When I okay. looked into it, all I could get, all I thought um, was submitted was fire. Mine says One folder. folder in the fire. Mine says folder empty. It. Folder empty. Yeah. Are you opening it with a different email, perhaps? Because you only have access with the email that you were no. signed up to I, use it on. That was a problem, and it was supposed to be straightened out because half the people were using my work email and half the people were working my personal email. So it which should go to my personal. Personal, okay. I'm going to try again, but I haven't been able to get into it. I, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I just figured I was doing something wrong, or only Fire wanted money because that's all I can see. Well, let me look okay. into that. Now, do you have two different emails, perhaps? That I do. Causing the problem? Which one should yours be going to? Um, I'm going to say, I don't know. Uh, pr personal, probably. The Dodds. Dodd, yeah. Yep. It, it that's easy that to remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Dodd, D-O-D-D. -D. Oh, I thought you said dog email. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I was like, that's no. great. I remember everything that has to do with dogs. Got it. <laughs> It's like dog. When I spell it, I say D like dog. Perfect. I'll check into that. Did Eloise, were you able to access it? No. Oh, Mary made you copies. Yes. And were you able to access it at all? Didn't even try it. Oh, okay. Sorry. No problem. Well, I will check all the permissions and everything, okay. and then if anyone has further trouble, I'll check that in the morning. So if you all want to check, like, late later on tomorrow or Wednesday, and if you're still not able to get in, just shoot me an email, yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll work it out. In the past, when it's been a permission thing, it's said, it's been a permit, like yeah, you don't have access say. to this right. folder. Yeah. Mine said, you're in, the only thing in here is fire. Because sometimes there's a subfolder, like it shows a few things across the top, but yeah. there's also like a folder below that you have to click into. So I don't know if that's part of the issue Potentially. as well. Because personnel had a similar issue a few weeks ago, too. So maybe just see if there's a subfolder kind of hanging out in there. It looks weird in the drive. They don't look like folders. Like, I'm still getting used to Google Drive, and it throws me off sometimes. I am, like, the least technically Oh, I thought you were going to say you were an person. expert. I was like, oh, great, gosh, you're coming no. in tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, 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 no. I asked uh, June what um, special articles were still open, mm -hmm. and so she gave me one, and then I said, well, can you do it by department? So she, I was looking at the library one now. I think the tricky thing with library is they the operating budgets are only allowed to go up two and a half percent, but five grand is too little for capital, so they're kind of stuck. So I can I can reach out to Bob too and have a conversation with. Him. I wasn't sure if it was Bob or the board. Good question. So let me. Um, I'll start with Bob and see if I can get a little more information for you. Well, he said sometimes you know Fred might not be available or something else. But they have a, additional money right now 
Well, that was another thing now that you mentioned that that I spoke to him about was, is there money in the facilities budget or should there be more money added to the facilities budget if we're talking about general repairs? Right, and that's why I asked him in our last meeting and I thought he had time that the two of us could get together and I'm in now. talk about So I don't know what happened. Oh, and you see everything? Not everything, I but would, I would more than I was seeing. I'm actually scared. seeing some document. Very strange. I don't know why. Okay, so maybe that's the route that we want to take. Sorry, we're just having a sideline conversation. Mm. I think the route we want to probably take is to bring it under the municipal, is it called municipal facilities budget? Uh, public buildings. Public buildings, excuse me. Um, and that brings it under Fred's um, jurisdiction as facilities director, okay. which would probably make more sense. You might need to get that across to, to the full library board as well as Bob. All that I sure. have, all that it is, Anna, is the request forms blank. Blank request <laughs> forms? Oh, goodness. Okay. That's, that's what I'm seeing in FY24 is a PDX and a PDX. See how good I am? A PDF and an Excel sheet of what Eric's um, got in his hand there, but blank. And there's not a folder down. Can I just pick up it says FY twenty one forms. This is more than I had a minute ago, so I don't know. Um, uh, share with me. Can you go? Oh, you go back a little bit. So if you. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. FY twenty four. Here we go. So the it's request by the department. Departments. Okay. There you are. Well, now I have everything. We have. So oh, look at all those. It Let may be opening in the forms folder, but if you go back out one layer, it there's a folder for request by departments. Awesome. Okay. Well, now see. I won't be able to find it again. Either, so <laughs> okay. I can probably send you a link specifically to that folder. Oh, that, that would be fabulous. Folder. Or you can save it as a... Oh, yeah. A favorites? Yeah. There's a way to do that. I know. I, I actually, actually know how to do... Oh, you Well, do. Okay. I might know how. I know how... I don't, I don't Google. Uh, do, do, do. Up here? Oh, f I know what you mean. Bookmark it. Yep, there bookmark it. Oh, yeah. perfect. I, yeah. That's what you're... I, okay. <laughs> that I know how to do. Got it. I feel like this is a progressive commercial. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> so then the last stuff we sort of have to uh, discuss would be, other than fire, would be BMS to Honto school stuff. Um I would recommend you have them in yeah, because that'd be great. One of the questions that I had was, so what are they asking Boylston to pay? Because they're coming at us with this request. What is the is there a mirror request on right? Is this the half what they need side? Right, right, and I don't think that's clear from their request. And also, how does this impact? our existing assessment because like this interest for the building um, under Tejanto, is that something that's already worked in to our annual capital assessment that we pay? So I think there's just some more, and it, there's a new finance um, director yep. over there. So I think that maybe that this is her first time doing this and so she probably would be easier to talk about it, I would think in person. Awesome. Do you um, have a mechanism of reaching out to her yes. that you could either send me or? I sure can. Her name is Nancy, I believe, Kon Koniski, and I can get you her contact information. I can okay. certainly send that over. It might be Koniski. Kon is that how you say it? Thank you. I'm, I, I I'm wasn't sure. sure. Koniski? Kon Koniski, yeah. Koniski? Nancy Koniski. Koniski. I'm just going to email her out so I won't have to pronounce Nancy it. Nancy C. Nancy C. Um, I will say it's good before from the school we've just received, we need 300,000. And that's been the, so it's great to see a breakdown of what it might be used for. They will take all the detail you can get. Right? Absolutely. And did you see next year they want, uh, well this year it's 
272-838. So I call it 300,000 to replace the flat roof. I saw and then that. next year it's 1.1 million for the Pearl Memorial shingle roof. Where is the flat roof versus the shingle roof? I don't on know. That? That's just what they said. Okay. So that's just what I think. Do it's mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. No, that's Pearl that's Memorial. That's all Pearl. Which is what? It's got to be 30. Oh, 30. It's flat, oh, no, it's going to be more than 30 years. years. Look what I have, though, in my paperwork that needs a home. What's that? It's the school facilities assessment oh, yeah. that was done that last year? Last year, yeah, yeah. I remember that. 20 years? How old is that school? Guy's going to be 21. We're, we're, so we're 22, so they'd be 23, 24. Yeah, it's got to be somewhere between 20 and 30. Yeah, yeah, like I so said, I think we came in two years after that. So, so it's about 25 years old, something like that. Yeah, 24 years old. So the facilities assessment people yeah, did have, here we go. Uh, I giggle only because their estimates, the numbers they gave us are not actually quotes. They're based on the estimates given by the facilities um, people. The numbers are identical. Um, so we certainly would prefer and a, a current quote. Um, so I just sent you yeah. her contacts, but I awesome. realized in my phone I only had the iCloud one. Oh, that's Is fine. That okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I run my as business. I sent it. I went. Oh, she like, just yeah. told me about a different one. But I was thinking dogs, and that said something with dogs. And see, that's what happens. <laughs> it gets stuck in my head. <laughs> okay, so we can pin them down in yep. a future meeting. I did talk to a full committee member and I said it would have been helpful if they would say, you know, give a priority one, mm -hmm. two, three. Yep. I mean. The facilities report does do that. Oh, so, yeah. uh, no, no. This facilities report by the architect. Um, I don't think I've seen that. Uh, I'm happy to photocopy it and share it with you. Do you have it on an email? No, I don't think so. I think this is what I was given at the meeting. Oh. So Margaret and I went to the presentation. Okay. Um, but I can look and check and see if, um, if I have it via email. If not, I can scan it and make it. Well, one of the things for Burla Memorial says repaving the walkway and playground, 20000 Is that something they have to do independent of us, or is that something we can do? As I don't know how that works. I don't know uh, like where our stuff goes with the school budget. I know they just did a bunch of work just this past springtime. They did some past work. They painted their own lines this year. Um, we did do the back uh, basketball area. Um, we took all the old hot top out two years ago, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they had uh, that redone. I'm trying to picture what sidewalk they're talking about, unless it's the one that goes all the way out back. I don't know. If you want, you, you can look at it. Yeah. Well, uh, there's only two sidewalks. The one from South Street in, and yep. then and then it goes around and then to the back. This means <coughs> one continual sidewalk, isn't it? Well, the one that goes around the building, I believe, is concrete. The only hot top one that comes from the basketball court in the back and kind of goes up along the children's playground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those are the only two. What's happening with the tennis courts? No, the tennis courts are That's just kind of on a stand. The RF, the recreate, the RFP that Recreation has been working on for resurfacing the courts. So they've given it to me. I just have to put it out to bid. So that's the good news. Bad news is budget season has slowed things down, and that's in the kind of the backlog of procurement projects that we have going on. So as soon as I can I have a free minute, I will get it out. Is you know how bad they had that fenced in playground? 
Yeah. Oh, that oh. has sidewalks. Oh, well, sorry. That might be. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got it. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So we want to talk at our next meeting, preferably to BMS and to fire. Yep. Yes. Any other mm -hmm. people we'd like to pin down, demand information from? Is there anybody else that's put in a request that we don't know about or that <laughs> we to need to? To the best of my knowledge, this is all the requests. Okay. All right. I have one more I just learned about. Um, let's see. There's a gentleman sitting over there with a smile on his face that you can't see because he's behind the camera. Um, <laughs> it was just brought to my attention that um, the server for cable access, which is about $35,000, is about to go. And there may not be sufficient funding in the cable access budget based on what they get annually through the PEG grant. Um, that's the public service, or public um, grant that comes from um, the cable company. Is mm -hmm. it Spectrum here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, wasn't sure. <laughs> um, so what we are going to do first, and Roger and I spoke this evening, is we're going to check on funding that's available in the budget uh, currently with accounting. Um, but that is something that may have to go on, and I know it's a bit delayed, but uh, may have to go on as a capital request because I'm not sure their annual budget is right around that amount. So that's kind of an above and beyond capital expense that wouldn't be able to be covered. And the server is old? It's more than five years old. It could be 10. Okay. But there would be some significant cost savings, Roger was saying, because right now there's there's a lot of delay in space and speed, and it's taking up a lot of Brittany's time to kind of process everything. So there would be a cost savings there with a newer server that was faster, that had more space on it. And it would also potentially reduce the cost of the cameras as well. Is that correct, the camera project that we're looking well, at? the cameras can go direct to the server. Right, so there's some efficiencies and some potential savings there as well. So um, that's something we'll look into, and if we can have that for you for the next time, we, we will do that. Great. Um, I also know there's rumor about an LED sign at BMS, um, and I do see LED sign written down here under the BMS yeah. l logo, but do you know if that's the I, same you know, as the planning board LED sign? No, the one that got shot down by CBA? Yeah. yeah. Because they didn't show up several times. I do okay. know that this sign has been a request for quite some time. Yes. I mean, I haven't had children in there six years, seven years, and they were talking about it then, because the sign they have now is... It fell down. It, well, it was one that you'd go out and you put yeah. the letters in, and um, so, I mean, but it, this has been going on for six or seven years. <laughs> so my, understa my understanding, did, and you may know a bit more about this, Eloise, did, or were you not the one who told me? You may not have been. There's a lot of people that tell me things, and sometimes I forget who. Part said, of part of it is they want it electronic so that they can change right. it, and but in order to get access to uh, electricity, I believe they have to go on the town's land. Mm. So they went to the selectman, and the selectman said, you know, sure, whatever, but they never showed. They had uh, three meetings. They came for the first meeting, but they didn't come for the the other two meetings a month apart. Mm. And who do they have to meet with? ZBA. ZBA. So I had to send out the decision. Mm. When was that decision? So uh, maybe about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And what was the decision? No. Because they haven't followed through on their end of it. Mm hmm. Hmm. And was that sent to the planning board people? Planning board, yes. I have to send it to everybody on the abutters list 
and then I have to send it to the selectmen, the planning board, the board of health, the ZBA, because I have to put in, this mm -hmm. is your 20 day appeal right. period. Yeah. And I keep a copy. Okay. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, the planning board was sort of interested. They wanted to see, you know, what, what does it look like? Well, it's similar to the one at Tahanto. That's all I can tell you. Well, then they should take a picture of the one at Tahanto and say, this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. And it, it's, it's more not just for Berlin BMS community. It's more like a community, like they could put it on it, don't forget to vote today. Do you know what I mean? And all the people that would be going in and out of the school would I'd see like that. I like a big television on the side of the building. <laughs> So on Mondays, they can say, what's the capital of Argentina? Now on Tuesday, they can give math questions. You know, they you can, can have that. fun with it. Right. They can do that. But anyways, that's unfortunate because it's been a long time request. Well, then you should send them an email, although it's late. There's always next year. Huh? There's <laughs> always next year. Well, they can reapply. <laughs> I didn't charge them. <laughs> it's very nice of you. Well, a public body usually doesn't charge itself. Mm. I think that's um, laundering. <laughs> you charge yourself. Um, okay. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Maybe we need an HBAC yeah. unit. Hold in there. <laughs> nope. Okay. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to say when is our next meeting? Mm. Yeah. I'm and sorry I messed you all up on that. What about the first week of December? We do have a board meeting on the 5th, a select board meeting. Just the 7th is traffic safety. Yes, but if we're done early? Yeah, it's always like 40 minutes say that it will be oh. um we just have to limit eloise's questions for traffic safety <laughs> sorry no we're pretty fresh on traffic safety so i'm just being fresh she knows <laughs> that uh wednesday december the 7th at 7 p.m would that work nope because that's I'm FinCon. oh i work I at know. seven to nine on wednesday i thought FinCon wasn't meeting until the 14th Oh, maybe it's Wednesday. I'm just seeing Wednesday, so Wednesdays are always. So what day did you say? I'm sorry. I said Wednesday the seventh, but Eloise works. Yeah, she always works Wednesdays too. Um, so Monday the. It's a possibility of a Thursday. I'm in the grad program, and it needs. I opted for the only day of the week not to be Thursday, okay. and there's only six of us in the class. And the other five wanted Thursday, so I got overruled. Overruled. So I also do have a conflict on Thursdays. Okay. So it's not just you. <laughs> well, um, is Tuesdays a bad night? I I you attend the planning board. Meetings. You can't do Tuesday. Okay. I also cannot do okay. Tuesdays. So but when they are the second and the fourth. Tuesday. Okay. So the first and the third, I could be available. First, but, she, but you can't be. But I can't be. I have every okay. Tuesday. I think the seventh, I, I'm trying to look at the calendar. Yeah, I don't have FinCom on the seventh. You're correct. I, I think that's open that evening. I don't have any, there's conservation that yeah. evening is all I'm showing. Yeah, I have traffic safe, traffic, traffic safety. Uh, safety advisory at 5.30 and, and conservation at 7. But I, Eloise so, still works. Oh, Eloise still works. It's Wednesday. Wednesdays. That's all right. If I'm asking too many questions, then we'll I'll skip the next <laughs> meeting. So, so we, no, 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 no. That's so not there's right. selectmen on the fifth. You said correct. Is there selectmen on the twelfth? Yeah, they meet every Monday. They are starting to meet every Monday. Darn them! Uh, I know. 
And because of the holiday, I believe they're meeting the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th because they're not going to meet the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas. Um, Friday the 2nd? Because what everybody wants to do on a Friday night. I'm okay. I'm open. I don't have anything on Friday the 2nd. Okay, Friday the 2nd it is. Um... <clears throat> can we meet earlier I was just going to say 7 or does somebody want earlier I, I'm I'm free to meet whenever how's 5.30 sure everyone what was it 5.30 5.30 5 I don't okay. know if that works is that too early as long as 5, five of anything, or any, any time after 3 <laughs> works for me I can do 5 or later if I'm running on time so 5.30 would be safer oh 5.30 well I can be late Hmm. No, you cannot. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I work on other people's schedules, so I try really hard to be on time to things. Okay, so our next meeting is uh, Friday, December second at five thirty. I will um, attempt oh, to. Are we going to have a Zoom component? We can. Do we need one? As it gets. If it's rainy or snowy, I might not be here. Okay. I will say as we move into January, I start traveling to Florida every other week. Um, so. We'll, we'll follow you to Florida. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm happy to host in uh, the one room that I rent. Uh, <laughs> I travel with three dogs, just so you uh, know. So that'll fit perfectly. In well, I travel with one, so the four of us <laughs> would be really cozy. Perfect. Might be so a dog we, party. 5.30 yeah. on December 2nd. Now, who's going to post that? I will post okay. that. Okay. All right. Yep. I'll All right. Do it right now. Um, okay. And, yeah, so we ca I can add a Zoom component if you would like. Yeah. Okay. And we might so have people that, that want to Zoom in. So, yeah, the, yeah and the hy hybrids, I, and I don't know, they're a little tricky. I think we need to check with Brittany to make sure that's something that we that's could room across the hall. do. Oh, can we? We can use so that. So can room. we check on that that date with her? Yeah, that's what we did one yeah. day. I think actually. <laughs> we yeah. zoomed in I'm here. I'm speaking again to the man behind the, the camera. Yeah. The other ones with the big TV in the corner. You can put the TV in the corner uh, and have oh. the whole thing. So that was I think it's easier uh, over there. Yeah. But December second. The wrong person. At yeah, we'll have to find somebody who knows somebody how to turn it on. About technology. Yeah. Roger's checking with Brittany awesome. to see if that's something she can help us with on the hybrid side. If not, the other option is we could open a Zoom not to the public, but to the board members. I could have a, a link just for you or you or whoever's not able to. We've done that before. And I could literally just set my computer up at the table facing you all so you can see each other. But that would only be for you all, not the public specifically. So if it doesn't work from a hybrid perspective, that is another option. Done. Okay. Can you not do that with the public? Is that not <coughs> the problem? Is you can't really hear, you can't interact very well with the public because they can't. It, it, it doesn't work without like a TV screen when you have the public because they're all in like little small areas and you also have to have somebody manning it in case people raise their hands. What I would do is I would just set up the one person and then they could communicate back and forth. The volume is a little tricky though. That is hard even with just a, a board member being on it, so. Okay. But we can talk about it. I'll f I can follow up with Roger. Well, as Eric said, if you need to have the TV, then maybe we just meet in the room across yeah. the hall. Yeah. yeah, but we also need somebody to tell us how to turn it on and <laughs> set it up. And I'm pretty good with technology, but that's a little outside my wheelhouse, so. Yeah, so we should work on getting the training yeah. room set up for uh, all hybrid meetings. So it's got all the audio and the projector and we can put the people up on a 10 foot screen. Yeah, I mean, if it's a matter of just turning on the TV, but if things need to be connected or whatever, if someone shows me how to do it, I can do it. I just would need to be shown. Yeah. And last time we had to bring the, the, the cable all the way into the cable room connection didn't work. Oh, mm. okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll check and see what we can do. Okay. Sounds good. I'll post it as Zoom and 
and then we'll go from there. Okay. So then I'm going to adjourn us at 8.49 p.m.